In 2019, a student from the University of South Carolina's psychology department, Courtney Merchant, conducted some interesting research. Her days focused on how skin color and clothing color can affect people's perception of violence and aggression by criminals. The study involved 156 participants. They were randomly assigned to see the offender as a white or black male wearing a red or gray shirt. Then they indicated how aggressive and violent the offender was, followed by recommending an appropriate price and sentence for the crime. According to the research results, African-American participants were more likely to rate white criminals as more aggressive in the red shirt conditions. There was also in a group bias effect as black and white participants assigned longer price and sentence to criminals of the opposite race. However, the most fascinating finding was that all participants believed that criminals of both races were more prone to violence if they were dressed in red. Air for color can have significance in shaping impressions and people use information about color not only to hypothetically jungle criminals, but also to form their own perception of each individual. Today we will discuss the psychology of color and how the cool tone of your dress can not only influence your mood, but also significantly after your perspective on things. Color is a powerful tool for communication and is also one of the ways we self-identify. The color of our clothing serves a signal to others, it tells them who we are. When we get dressed each morning, we are telling ourselves who we aim to be and how we hope to feel, with color as a vital component. For centuries, theories have attempted to understand the meaning attached to various hues. History, rules and laws have both forbidden a quiet people to wear specific palettes. Doctors and nurses, for example, wear specified uniforms in designed hues. Color has often been used to exemplify status too. During the Tudor period, England sanctuary laws forbid anyone under the rank of Knight of the Garter from wearing crimson. It was the most expensive to produce and thus reserved for higher ranking individuals to plan their wealth. Our brain can store and process visuals faster than text. About 90% of the information is transmitted by our brain as visuals. Even before we learned to read, we began to associate colors with shapes and objects. Every way in the world, color is used to control traffic because of brain reads color much faster than text. Color coding is the way to convey information quickly, which facilitates visual research. We have learned since Goethe's days that each color impact you based on a combination of three things. The innate psychology of the color shared across cultures likely delivered from how the color appears in nature. The cultural association of the color, for example in America green often means luck, and in China wearing a green hat implies infidelity. Your personal connection to colors, for example, if you love your grandparents and inside of their house was paint orange through your childhood, you may have a pleasant personal association with the color. As humans, only 20% of our decisions we make being conscious. The rest happens without us even realizing. This same rule applies when we wear colors. We have emotional experience with different hues and shades and respond to them subconsciously. Colors was our primary method of decision-making before we could talk, said psychologist Karen Haller, who worked with high street retailer Rice on its recent collection Color Sham. It still is our primary language on some conscious level. By making color conscious again, we can tap into embracing our emotion. In other words, we make judgments on instincts when we see certain colors which produces specific emotions. Dressing for your mood isn't exactly a new phenomenon. The term dopamine dressing hair circulated for years. It's more about personal connection to a sheet rather than color having the same effect on us all. 
Many of our memory centers around coping whether it's war to you or someone else war at the time. We hold on these memories and what triggers them. It's this backcourt of information that makes up our emotional map of various colors. We each have our perception of colors and their meaning for us can be both negative and positive. It depends on each individual and their personal relationship with color. For example, I might be a red and feel genuine anger and excitement. In a way, the color red identifies this behavior, but someone else, not me, may feel an energy boost wearing the same shade. Black can make someone confident, but for someone else it might be a red flag for their psychological state. Color either supports how you feel or how others perceive you. Our bodies produce dopamine and our nervous system uses it to send messages between nerve cells. Maria Constantina, a lecturer in cultural and historical studies at the London College of Fashion, explains. It has many functions. It is involved in reward, motivation, memory, and attention. When dopamine is realized in large amounts, it creates feelings of pleasure and reward, which motivate us to repeat a specific behavior. In theory, this specific behavior could include the feelings we have when we buy or wear new clothes. This concept of wearing certain clothes to make us happier is something which Professor Karen Pine from the University of Hertfordshire decided to instigate in 2012. Pine undertook a study into this idea of dopamine dressing and found that when participants wore clothes of symbolic value to them, their perceived confidence increased. Furthermore, classic and commonly held ideas about interrupting colors are not universal. Color therapy and chromotherapy have long piqued cultural interest dating back to ancient Egypt and have been integrated into interior design and the surrounding environment. For example, cool tones are used to enhance concentration, while pastel greens promote a sense of calm. Color is caused to link to emotions, it colors our language, we say we're green with envy or red with danger, thus effectively coloring our own emotions. Shikala Forbes Bell, a fashion psychologist consultant and founder of website Fashion is Psychology, agree that there are certain colors that we associate with certain emotions, but explain that isn't as assembled within us as we might think. There are some interpretation of color that are universal, she says. Cold colors like blue include feelings of calmness and creativity, while warm colors like red can cause feelings of excitement, but happiness is too subjective experience to be pinned down to one color. The better way to think about dopamine dressing is in relation to personal rather than universal associations. The theory of enclosed cognition teach us that the attributes we associate with specific colors are incredibly powerful. When we wear this color, the associations have the power to change the way we feel and even change the way we act. For example, if you associate a yellow jumper with happiness, then you will embody that feeling of happiness when you wear it. But of course, these feelings are subjective. For someone, black clothing may bring more pleasant and depression than bright ones. And it all depends on individuals' personal associations with that particular shade. Some studies directly link certain clothing styles to a personal's confidence and authority. One such study showed that people who wear black clothing have a greater influence in a group, as they appear more authoritative. If your ultimate goal is to feel confident and powerful in black, then feelings of joy are sure to follow. However, it's important to emphasize that it all depends on your personal associations. The subjective nature of color perception makes it impossible to determine precisely which color we should wear to improve our mood. It doesn't mean that we must always wear bright and neon colors to feel happier. However, this is evidence to suggest that a post-lockdown world may still result in the public wearing more color on the whole. The proverbial rainbow after the storm, so to speak. During Oliver Cromwell's rule in the United Kingdom, some neat and simple combinations in dark greys were popular possibly for religion, smaller reasons, or to demonstrate social and political commitment. In constant during the Restorian period in England, fashion saw a resurgence brightness colors. 
Recently, we instead a new surge in the influence of rape culture on neon shades right after the COVID pandemic indeed. It's also important to know that some colors remain strong preference through a personal life, regardless of their gender. Notably, blue and red consistently remain popular choices through a personal lifetime. Interestingly, yellow typically captures children's attention, but its appeal tends to decrease as they transition into adulthood. As people grow older, they tend to show an enticeable inclination toward colors with shorter wavelengths such as blue, green, and purple. Conversely, colors with longer wavelengths like red, orange, and yellow usually generate less enthusiasm in people as they age. How do you figure out which colors suit you best? Start with some basic knowledge and just experiment. Specific meanings assigned by color therapy and psychology may not be accurate for everyone, but they make a great starting point. Take a look in your wardrobe and see what emotions come up with each color. Try muted tones with pops of colors, does this raise or lower your confidence level? Experiment with various activities as well. Does green feel calming when you are eating breakfast but heavy when you are working? Through trial and error you can find the right combination for your moods. And how you can start adding more colors to your own wardrobe if it's mainly monochromic and you are not looking to shift towards neon colors combinations. It can be as simple as bright sock that only you know about and that bring you joy. Accessories are also a fantastic way to add a touch of color to your outfit. A necklace, a purse or a scarf that you can tie to your back or around your neck, these are cost-effective ways to infuse a bit of color. Color either complements what you are feeling, what you want to feel or how others perceive you. And how do not get swayed by passing trends? I try my best to avoid them and instead take a more thoughtful approach, say style is in a shock. For me, it's always about thinking a step back to think about my wardrobe and not rushing to purchase someone new just because it's what everyone is wearing. It's a show change in mid-set, but making a style wishlist or mood board and giving myself 24 hours before I hit buy has really helped. Determining which colors evoke positive personal sensations for you and suit you best can completely change your approach to choosing clothing. What we wear is an expression of identity and individuality. Wearing something that makes you feel uncomfortable is an impact step. We spend most of our lives in clothing, so it should bring joy. Color psychology and fashion affects our emotion, perceptions and self-expressions in ways that go beyond aesthetic. Colors have innumerous power in molding our aesthetic choices and deafening cultural moments from the exuberant attraction of orange to the timeless elegance of black. And friends, if you enjoyed this video, I'll be very grateful for all of your reactions. Thanks for your attention and bye-bye!